Hello, everybody. Welcome to the introduction to his focus webinar. Also, welcome to my colleague who is in the chat room and will answer all your questions. So I'm Jelle Willems. I'm working in the product department of ODAC. And today I will show you or give you an introduction on how to use ease focus and how you can convince your customers with an ease focus project you've made. So I would just say let's get started and okay. So what is EASE? EASE stands for Enhanced Acoustic Simulator for Engineers. It's made by the German company AFMG. And what you can do with EASE is you can do acoustic simulations for all kind of projects for, uh, from large concert venues to small uh, restaurants. So everything or all acoustic simulations are possible actually. So what does EASE do? EASE is used for doing all kinds of acoustic simulations. There are quite a few EASE versions and packages, which I will talk about later in this presentation. And how does EASE work for our kind of business? For our, our purpose, we need to use detailed loudspeaker data, which we can use in our simulations. Uh, all these loudspeaker data is measured by a German company, EFAA. They're lo located in Aachen, Germany. And uh, so they measure our speakers and these speaker data is stored into GLL files. GLL file stands for Generic Loudspeaker Library. Some more about GLLs. So GLL, the generic loudspeaker library, is the most realistic and extensive format for loudspeaker data. It contains all the specifications of the loudspeaker, like weight, dimensions, uh, 3D cabinet plot. It also includes all the measured speaker data, and it can include licenses for each address and each focus. This is all compiled into a GLL file. Uh, ADAC invested recently quite heavy in ease focus licenses, so you as an end user can use ease focus for free. We also have quite a few licenses for ease address. Uh, I will talk later about all the different ease versions, so all our ADAC GLL files can be downloaded from our website. Then the GLL viewer. The GLL viewer is a free tool which you can use to view GLL files. You can, for example, calculate the balloon diagram based on the, the speaker you or the GLL file you have opened and information like sensitivity, maximum SPL, polar plots, and others can be seen within the GLL viewer. The GLL viewer can be downloaded free of charge from the AFMG website. So I would just ask you all guys to go ahead and download the software. It's quite nice to import a GLL file from another speaker and you can see all the, all the specifications actually. Then a little bit more about all the different East versions. There are quite a few East versions. The most important ones is the East, the full version, it's a paid software. So if you want to use it, you have to buy it yourself. It's quite expensive. It's actually used for extensive calculations, mostly used by engineering offices. Uh, all other GL files can be used within East full version. And within East, you can do full 3D simulation with room acoustics and reverberations. Then there is another East version, East EVAC. It's also a paid version, so if you want to use it, you have to pay for it. It's for doing acoustic simulations for evacuation systems. And also for this one, other GLL files can be used. Then the two softwares where we invested in, that's East Address and East Focus. East Address is also free for you as an end user, as we or sorry, East address is free for the end user. ADAC pays a fee per speaker, and it's mostly used for ceiling speakers. 
So you only have a top view of this, and it's used to calculate SPL files, values, sorry. It does an automatically arrangement of the speakers. So you just say, I, I have 12 speakers for this room, and it will automatically do an arrangement. And you can use power tappings of the speakers, as most uh, ceiling speakers have 170 volts systems, and you can uh, change the power tappings for the speakers. That's that about his address. For his focus, it's also free for the end user as ADAC pays a fee per speaker. We do, you can use this for 2D slash 3D view for line arrays, sub arrays, column speakers, and conventional speakers. It's not a real 3D, it's more like a top view and a side view, but it's, it uses the same engine as the ease software to do all the calculations. One big thing you need to know is that if you use East Edwards or East Focus, it does not take into account walls. So it's just for direct SPL only. Then just a quick dive into East Edwards. As you can see here, I show you a East Edwards project. Uh, some more about that. It's a 2D tool for acoustic simulations. You can use it for sound coverage and SPL analysis on floor plans, so just on a top view, and it's direct SPL only, as I already told you. This is the most simple ease version which they have. So if you want to just go get started and add some ceiling speakers, ease address is the way to go. If you want to do a little bit more, I would advise you to go to ease focus. So here I just show you an East Address project we created. It's a very basic project. We have added nine ATEA 2 speakers on the ceiling. And as you can see, it's automatically arranged in a square room. And uh, you can also see the distribution graph below on how many percentage of the room has a different, a particular sound level. And above you see the a room mapping with the SPL values in different colors. So that's it about for East Address. Next, we will focus on East Focus. East Focus is a bit more extensive and has some nice features which you can use to do acoustic simulations free of charge as we pay for the license per speaker. For every speaker we add to East Focus, we pay a license to AFMG and then they add the license to the GLL file. And by doing this, you can use download our GLL file and it will automatically recognize that it has a license in it and you can use it in East Focus. So what is East Focus? East Focus is a free 2D, 3D simulation tool based on East. It gives you a top view and a side view and the locations and or rooms can be drawn. It can be used to calculate line arrays, sub arrays or conventional speakers. And it gives you a detailed analysis about sound coverage, SPL levels, and frequency response. If you want to download, I, I've included the link. If you go to that, you can download our East Focus installer. It's a package where you download East Focus. It will install East Focus, but it will also install all our GLL files we have at the moment. So what we've done, we've created a seven step guide on how to proceed with ease focus. These steps will guide you through the process and let you create a report which you can use to convince customers. As you can see here, we that's the demo project we've created. You can download this also from our website together with this presentation. So if you need this, you can just download it and go ahead with that. So the first step which you would do in a seven step guide. The first step is to list all the requirements which are needed for the project. The first thing you do is which is this, what is the size and the layout of the room. So you have to get all the measurements to do the room layout. You can also import a floor plan to have the floor plan. And based on that, you can add speakers and areas. So, which sound levels do you require? That's quite something important. If it's background music areas, we would advise you to go around 85 dB or less, and we always advise you to go five up to 10 dB above the background noise. For foreground music areas, we would advise you to 85 until 95 decibels. And for club party concert areas, 
we would advise you go, to go between 95 and 100 dB. Also, this, uh, this is based on the limitations within your country. For example, in Belgium, there is a, a limitation for club and party and concert areas where you cannot uh, go over 100 dB, I think. And then some more, what's your budget? So that's also quite an important thing. And in general, the more speakers you add, the more evenly the sound is spread and the lower levels per speakers are required. So that's for that. The next step would be to set all your project properties. Uh, as you can see, you can add a project title, you can add an author, you can add your company, you can add some notes. It's important to fill in all these information as this will used when you export a report after you finish your project. Uh, also, the things like temperature, air pressure and humidity can be adjusted and will be taken into be account if you start rendering or doing the calculations of the values. Uh, so that's also something which is quite important that you will change this based on yeah, if it's an outdoor project and what's the average temperature throughout the year. So the next step would be to enter the project settings. This is also quite important because you need to add the seating and standing height. For example, here the seating height is 1.20 meters and the standing height is 1.70 meters average. Uh, it's always good to add these. So within the within the next steps we will use these values so always uh, adjust them accordingly next you would also add uh, you can also add the lower and upper height for the project or for the sound system sound sources we always advise you to set the upper height to the height of the ceiling so that's the upper height that the sound sources can be placed that's all that's it for the project properties so we will go to the next step the next step is to draw your rooms in ease focus for every separate room another project needs to be created why you need to do this because walls are not in, taken into account and will not be used in the calculations and it only gives you direct spl as i already mentioned without reflections or room reverberations uh, also, drawings can be made based on importing floor plans. After our seven step guide, there is a slide on how to import a floor plan as a background image. So I'll show you that afterwards. And within your project, your room can be divide in, divided into multiple audience zones and your zones can be divided in multiple areas. And all these areas can also be grouped. For example, here you see I've created, we have one room, I've created one zone within this room, and I've created a top area and a bottom area in this project. What's also quite important is that for every area I need, you need to set the ear height. For example, if it's a seating area, a standing area, or a custom area, that's what I've shown you. I will go just back in the, previous slide, the ear heights you see here, we, that's the ones you can add to the areas and the calculations will be based on the ear heights in a specific area. So the next step would be to add the sound sources. Sound sources, like, for example, our ADAC speakers can be added to the drawing. Uh, they can be positioned in any direction and for the Sound sources, you can change the gain, delay, and polarity as you wish. Also, the speakers can be grouped. For example, you can have the top row as a group, the, the bottom row as a group. And in this example, I've added 11 ATEO MK4 MK2 speakers. So as you can see, that's ideally suited for background music. That's it for adding the sound sources. That's some, something which is very simple. What you also can do is in some specific cases, you can add subwoofer arrays. That's also the possibility. But for now, ADAC does not include subwoofer arrays as we mostly don't do this. This is more for big systems, large setups. 
the next step. Once you've done all this, you can do the show mapping. What show mapping does, it enables the rendering of all your sound levels. For example, you can do the, as you can see here, I've started the, the enable rendering and you can see how the sound, the SPL values are within the room. Uh, you can choose between direct SPLC or direct SPLA weighted, and you can change uh, to broadband or you can use a user defined frequency range. These are all settings you can change. Then also you can disable specific audio sources, areas or groups. Sometimes if you are busy in a project and you want to just see what's the what the top row is doing you could disable the 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 lower group of speakers and it will just do the calculations for the top row what's also something which is quite important when you're changing or want to edit uh please stop the show mapping enabled because if you uh, draw while the show mapping is enabled Every time you do a change within your project, it will it will start recalculating, and this is very difficult to to do your uh, drawing or to do your changes. So, I would only advise you to start to show mapping once you're finished with drawing, or if you want to make an adjustment to stop it, and then once you're finished to restart it. And then also, the more speakers you add, the more rendering time is needed. So as you can imagine, the more speakers and the larger the room, the more time it takes into account to do all the measurements or to all do, sorry, to do all the calculations. Uh, that's for the show mapping. Is there something else I can tell about this? Uh, no, that would be it. So the next step would be to add receivers. Once you have uh, added your sound sources, you can add receivers. You can think about the receiver as a listener or a person on a specific space in the room. And it's visualized by numbers on the map. For example, in this case, I've added four receivers. These four receivers are res representative points on the map, which you can use and the ear height for example if it's a seating area and we added it to 1.20 meters you will it will calculate the value on the specific locations and you can have a frequency and time response on this specific location as you can see below in the graphs uh, for these points as i already told you can have a detailed acoustic analysis like the frequency and time response so that's it for the receivers. The one of the final steps is to create a report. Once you have done all this, you can create a report. It's an extensive automated report. It can be done in PDF or RTF, and it gives you a complete overview about your projects, like SPL renders, all your project information, like for example, the project title, date, author, and everything, the notes. Then all your sound sources, all our speaker source used are listed. Sorry, all our speakers used are listed. And you can have a distribution chart for all your speakers. And there's also a detailed sound source positioning list. So you can have an overview how, on how every speaker within the room is positioned. You see that also every speaker is numbered in the map below. And it's a good way to impress customers. So also, if you want to disable audio and so receivers or side views, this can be done. So you can make the report a little bit less extensive. I always would advise you to import the receivers and a side view because the side view is also quite good to see. That said, once you have done the seven step guide, you've been through to this point and you will have the report. Actually, it's quite simple to do an East focus project. Once you are starting with this, you will see that it's very simple and it's quite intuitive, actually. And that's it for the seven step guide.
So next would be, I would show you on how to import floor plans. So for floor plans, you can import floor plans, but it will only be used as a background image. For this, you can have several types of images that can be imported, like a PNG, a JPEG, a bitmap, or a GIF file. Uh, what you would do is you would import the image. Once you have imported the image, as you can see on the top, on the top image in the presentation, there is a button. It says layout picture. By doing that, that you can add the floor plan. Once you click on that, you go into the screen below. You select an image. And within the image, you need to select a reference object, for example, a door or window. These objects need to be used to. Uh, why you would do that is to that the, the size of your canvas is also the same size as your drawing, so that the, these values match. And how you do this is by selecting a reference object. For example, if you know that your windows are 1.5 meters wide, you could select like I did. I know that the, the, the window is 1.5 meters wide. So what I've done is I've set, moved pointer A to one part of the window or one side of the window. I've moved pointer B to the other side of the window. And then I've added or entered the length between these two points. For example, you see the line length 1.5 meters. And by doing this, you can set the size of your is drawing canvas to the size of your background picture. Uh, as you can see also below the browse button, there is, uh, you see two values. This is actually a zoom window of the floor plan. So that's easy to adjust the drawing or adjust your markers, your pointers A and B with this uh, zoomed window. Once you have entered everything, you just press OK, and it will adjust and align the drawing size, uh, the, the grid size, and the background drawing so that they will be aligned. And that's it for importing floor plans. That's also which something which is quite useful and which, which will be used quite often. Based on that, then you can start drawing your uh, images or your, sorry, your zones and areas. And then next up, I have some ease focused tips and tricks. Uh, I will go over them. These are actually quite interesting. So one of the first things is if you want to go to your options, just use the F9 hotkey. It's very easy to do and it will actually, it's quite good to go into the options because you can change some uh, important settings. One of the settings is the rendering resolution. As you can see here, it's actually it's called mapping resolution. And it's how uh, detailed the calculations of your speakers will be. For example, here it's set to high. The higher the, the value you choose, the more time it takes to do the calculation, but the more detailed the calculations will be. Then the next step would be, or one of the other options is, you have a standard mode and the extended mode. For example, the extended mode, which I use, uh, is has some things like the, the time response, which is only available in the extended mode. And you will get a global filter, you can, so you can change the input parameters. And you can, change, you can get a filter per speakers. So you can uh, change the parameters for a specific sound source. For example, if you want to boost some highs or boost some mid frequencies, you can do it within the speakers and it will take this into account within your calculations. So that's it for the standard and extended mode. You will find this standard and extend, sorry, standard and extended mode under the environment tab, which you can see here. So options, environment, and there you can select mode extended. The next step would be to do fixed mapping colors. That's also something which is quite useful. Sometimes if you add speakers, uh, the, the mapping colors change. 
So it, the more speakers you add, the louder the SPL values, and the automatically the automatic scale will change. So if you want to do this fixed and have, for example, uh, the colors from 75 up to 100 dB, you can do this by going to your menu and set these values fixed. So when you will add more speakers, the colors will not change, and it, that's also something which is quite useful. Then some more. Uh, when you're drawing, you're drawing on a grid. Uh, when you, by default, the grid is dynamic. So if you zoom in or out, the grid will also always uh, follow, and the, the the value of the grid will change. But you can also add, set this to static. For example, what I sometimes do is I set the static, for example, uh, the the value to static and add a value of one meter, then the grid will always be one meter. So if I zoom in and out, the grid size will always be one meter. That's also something which is quite useful when you're drawing in East Focus. Then you can also do measurements, like uh, the, dif uh, the difference in meters between two points. The measurement, if you want to do this, you can do this by pressing Shift, clicking one point on your drawing canvas, move, and you will see the, diff the distance in measured in meters, but also in milliseconds. This is quite useful if you want to calculate the delay values. And then the last part is the scale to fit button. As you can see below, you have a zoom plus, you have a zoom minus, but you have also a scale to fit zoom. If you click on this button, the scale or your drawing will be scaled so that it's uh, nicely fitting within your drawing canvas. I always use it. I recommend to use this because that's quite interesting or quite easy to use. So that's it for the East Focus presentations. I hope for the East Focus presentation. I hope you uh, enjoyed or had some useful things or you take some useful things from the presentation. Uh, now I will go into East Focus and show you some uh, the things we have talked about, and I will open the restaurant, the demo project, so I can show you some things. Thanks already, and uh, yeah, I will do that now. So just one more thing, if you want to stay up to date, just go to, to adac.eu or follow us on social media. So next, I will open my East Focus project. So this is uh, the demo project, which you can also download from our website. Some things I would like to show you, for example, the scale zoom to fit button, which you find here. If you click it, you see it scales nicely to the size of your canvas. Uh, as you can see, see, the show mapping is enabled. If I would move a speaker, it starts recalculating. And that's not very useful if you want to do some changes or to want to do some things. So I always advise you to stop the mapping and then you could do the drawing. So I would maybe show you the options also. So. Here you find the mapping colors, which I was talking about. Now it's set to automatic scale, but you can also set this to, to have a scale always the same. And here within environment, you can see the modes. For example, extended mode. As you can see, we have the levels, the frequency response, the time response, distribution graph, filter, side view, and global filter. If I would go to standard and would click OK, you will see a lot of them are disappeared. The global filter, the speaker filter, and the time response. So yeah, I would advise you to always use the extended mode as this makes more sense. So that's for that. So once you start, or how you can add a speaker, it's quite simple. You right click on your, with your mouse somewhere in the canvas, you click add sound source, and for example, here we have the, I will 
take a CNO8, I'll say OK, and it will automatically add them to the project. If you double click on it, you see all the system parameters. You can change the name. For example, it's a side speaker or whatever, you can change it. Here you see all the, the location on the map. The Z axis is the height. So, for example, I would change it like this and move it in the side view a bit down. So that's the way you can do this. And then, as you can see, the vertical angle has been changed to minus 12.85. I could also do this over here and add minus 15. And as you can see, it changed here to minus, oh, oops, my bad. So now it's changed to minus 15. Here you can add the, adjust the settings for the speakers. For example, you want to adjust this value as this speaker is much more, or has a higher SPL output than all the others. You can could set it to minus 60 dB, for example, or you can add a delay. All these things can be done from here. Once, for example, if no speaker is selected and you would go to filter, it says no sound source to select it. Once you click on a speaker, you can see the filter here and you could adjust it accordingly. So you could raise, for example, some mids. All these things can be done with the filters and these will be taken into account once you do the calculations. By right clicking here below, it will reset the values. This is the show mapping bar, which I was talking about. So when you press show mapping, it will start doing the calculations. As you can see, now everything is blue, blue here. That's because of the difference and the automatically, the, automatically the automatic scale, actually. That's what I was talking about. If you don't want this to happen, you can go to file options, mapping colors, and you can set it manually, for example, from 75 to 100 dB. Now the colors will be like this. If I remove the speaker, the colors will be also the same because the, automatically scale, the automatic scale has been disabled. So that's it for the speakers. Then we can, for example, just give you a view about the zone. I just clicked on one zone. And as you can see, I've created a restaurant zone. Within this zone, I have seating area one, seating area two. And as you, the ear height is set, has been set to sitting. So these are, this is a seating area and this is a seating area. The same way you add a speaker, you can also add a zone. So you just click right on your right mouse and you say audience zone and you can select rectangular area, circular area or whatever you like. Also, there are some different copy modes. You just, if you want to, for example, select a speaker, press copy and press paste, it will copy the full speaker with everything. But you can also copy settings. For example, if you select the speaker, you right click and you just say copy setup. Now it copies the setup of this speaker and you can go to this one and you just say paste setup and it will paste the settings from this speaker to that speaker. That's also something which can be quite useful. For example, if you change the, the angles and stuff, then you can use this to copy these values. As you can see, once you click just in your project, you get all your project properties. So you can see your zones, your sound sources, and the four receivers I've added. The receivers can be added by just clicking here. And you'll see that you can set somewhere a receiver, for example, here. And now we have the fifth one. If you go to frequency response, 
you will see that there is a fifth one added and you can see the frequency response on that specific point. So that's it for our East Focus presentation. If you have any questions, you can always contact us. Uh, I would like to thank you for joining this webinar. And uh, yeah, my colleague will be very happy to ask any questions in the chat. So that was it for me. Uh, I wish you a good day and see you soon. Bye-bye.